So let's say we take our original two pi electrons and add another two pi electrons. Well, again, the first two pi electrons go down here. Then the next pi electron goes here. And now I still have one more pi electron, the fourth pi electron. Where am I going to put that? Should I put the fourth electron in this orbital or in this orbital on the right? Well, now we need a new principle that I haven't talked about yet, but that you probably have already seen earlier in the OCHEM class or in your general chemistry classes, uh, which is called Hunt's Rule. Hunt's Rule tells you what to do when you have two energy levels, when you have two molecular orbitals at the same energy level. And the principle is that you're going to put one electron in each of the energy levels before you put a second electron into any of them. So where do I put the last electron? I don't put it here. Instead, I put it here. That's what Hunt's rule says. Hunt's rule says, um, as long as we have another molecular orbital available at the same energy level, we have to put our next electron there. This is not too hard to understand because remember that electrons are unsociable. They like to be away from other electrons because electrons all have negative charges and like charges repel. So this electron um, might say to himself, gee, why should I go into this orbital where I'm going to be repelled by this electron when I can get a little bit further away and be in this orbital over here? So we put the two electrons in like this. Now, does this look like a stable or an unstable configuration? Well, what should jump out of this here is that we have unpaired electrons. In fact, we have two unpaired electrons. Here we have an unpaired electron, and here we have an unpaired electron. So we could call this a di-radical. Remember that a radical is when you have an unpaired electron. If you have two unpaired electrons, we can think of that as a di-radical. And of course we know that radicals are highly unstable, so we should expect that a di-radical is even more unstable. So this is a highly unstable configuration because we have the two unpaired electrons. highly unstable because of the unpaired electrons. Compare that to our first picture where we had all paired electrons, which was highly stable. So we've seen that if we add just two pi electrons, that'll be stable because they can be paired. But then if we add two more pi electrons, that will be unstable because they will be unpaired. Now let's think about a case where we have six pi electrons. We have six pi electrons, so we can think of that as we have the two pi electrons that we started with, and then we're adding four more. So we're going to start with two electrons and then add four more to give us six pi electrons total. Where would they go? Well, we know that the first two electrons get put into the bottom energy level. And now we have four more pi electrons. Well, we put the first one here. Then the next one has to go here according to Hunt's rule. We can't put another electron over here until uh, another electron in this level until this level is filled. Now we still have two more electrons. Well, now we're forced to put an uh, electron in this level because there's already a single electron in both of the uh, molecular orbitals at this level. And then the final electron goes here. Of course, we're not going to put any electrons in these higher energy levels until the lower energy levels are completely filled. That's the alpha principle. We are not going to put any electrons in these higher levels because it was not necessary. There was plenty of room for them in the lower levels. So now we've put in the two plus four pi electrons. The first two we put in here, and then we're able to fit four in the next pair of energy levels. Now, does this look like a stable or an unstable configuration? Well, remember the big problem with this configuration is that we had the two unpaired electrons, and now we fixed that problem. Instead, we, don't, we no longer have a di-radical. Now, again, all of the electrons are paired. So based on that principle, we would expect this to be a stable configuration. This is stable because all the electrons are paired, whereas this configuration was unstable because we had two unpaired electrons. Well, you might already be starting to see where the basis for Huckel's rule comes in. Remember that Huckel's rule says that we have a stable aromatic compound when the number of pi electrons falls into this list. The list starts with the number 2, and then we add 4, and then we add 4 again, and then we add 4 again, and then we can continue adding 4 to get the other numbers in the list. 
Well, now we can see why the list starts with the number two. If you add only two electrons, they will be paired because, again, there's always a single energy level at the bottom. This was, again, because in the Frost diagram, we always rotated the molecule, so there's a single corner at the bottom, which gives us a single energy level at the bottom. So when we put in the two electrons, they're always going to end up being paired. We can see why that is a stable configuration. And then what Huckel's rule says is that if you start with a stable configuration and you want to get to the next stable configuration, you have to add four pi electrons instead of adding two pi electrons. Notice that if you start with the number two here and you add two, you wouldn't get something in this list. Uh, or if you start with 10 and you add 2 to get 12 pi electrons, that wouldn't be in this list either. Anytime we have a stable configuration, we have to add 4 pi electrons to get to the next stable level. And now we can see why that is. If we start with a stable configuration and we only add 2 more pi electrons, because of Hunt's rule, we end up with a di radical, which is highly unstable. Instead, we should start with the 2 stable electrons and we should add 4 pi electrons. When we add four pi electrons, we're always able to completely fill both of the molecular orbitals at the next energy level, and we end up with no unpaired electrons. So now we're starting to see the basis for this principle. If we add two pi electrons, we can fill the bottom level and get a stable outcome. If we add 2 plus 4 pi electrons, we can fill this bottom level at the next two levels, and again we get a stable outcome. If we put in 2 plus 4 plus 4 pi electrons, well then that would allow us to completely fill this level. And again we'd have no unpaired electrons and that would be stable. Then if we add 4 more electrons, again we could completely fill these two levels, and we have a stable outcome. So the way to get the stable outcome is to start by adding two electrons and then add multiples of four. And you can see that if we have a break from this pattern and instead of adding a four, we just add two, we end up with this situation where we have unpaired electrons. For example, in this case, um, if we've added so far 10 electrons, and let's say we try to add just two more. Well, if we try to add just two more electrons, one will have to go here, and then the next one will have to go here, according to Hunt's rule, and now we have a situation with a di radical and two unpaired electrons, which is highly unstable. Instead, we should have added four more electrons so that we can completely fill those two levels. All right, so now we see why when we have electrons in this list, we have a stable compound and we call that aromatic, meaning very stable. And if the number of pi electrons is not in this list, then we end up with two unpaired electrons in a highly unstable compound, and we know that the term for that is anti-aromatic. And now we can also understand the other way of writing the rules rule. If you add just two pi electrons, that's stable because it fills the bottom level. And then you have to add a multiple of four pi electrons. If you're adding always multiples of four, you're always completely filling both of the molecular orbitals uh, at the next level of energy. 